Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, we're back here on the red tractor. Sure enough, got a flat tire here on this left front outside dual. I've already got it run up on a couple blocks down there. That does make it nice because now it's off the ground. Got the forklift sitting over there warming up. Because I'll, I'll just come up here with the forklift, come up underneath it, then just pick the tire up like that. A whole lot easier. So now I gotta get these bolts broke loose. They do have a big cap nut on the back. So what I'm hoping is I can take and spin them loose with the big one inch impact, and I'll grab the half inch to um that way I can throw a crescent wrench here on the back and just spin them rest with the rest of the way out with the crescent. So let's get started. Hey, that'll work perfect. That's breaking them loose. Like I say, now I can use my um, half inch impact and um, in fact, I can actually just hold that big cap nut on the back with my hands. Yep, that one spun all the way out. Huh. Well, that's odd. Got the half inch. All right, got the half inch drive. This is just so much handier to work with. Just finish spinning them out of there. Okay, right there's the big cap nut. It's got that big shoulder on it. These are actually a metric bolt. However. Uh, inch and three sixteenths matches up pretty good to take these out. Just a little bit of weight off because now that bolt is pinched in there. I can't get it out. And if I try spinning it out with that weight on it, all it's going to do is um, take it and mess the threads all up and get them all screwed up, and they're not going to work.
least one good thing, I can still drive the tractor around with that wheel taken off, so if that's any consolation. Alright, that's got that thing popped off. Um, we want to take it down to a tire repair shop. Thing is, though, just shut the forklift off a little bit quieter. That thing's getting a hole in the muffler. It's a little louder now. <laughs> but um, this thing's got a tube in it, and we got air coming back out, out around right there around the valve stem. And so a couple things. One, either the tube has gone bad, or there's a bad spot inside that tire that as it flexes, it's uh, got a steel cord poking into the tube and it's finally poked a hole into it. Because here a couple of days ago, in fact, I was actually out in uh, Beloit, Wisconsin, seeing some good friends of mine, and Dad took this thing, and you can see it back there. I put the Levin Shank chisel plow onto it, and he went out and um, chisel plowed a few areas that we had not done last fall. And uh, mainly some in rows and that kind of stuff. But um, after he got done doing all that, and that's when I found out it had this flat tire on the front. And when we picked it up from the neighbor and brought it home, it was all right. But once we started working it, that's when this problem showed up. And like I say, it's either, it's either, either the tire or the tube's gone bad. And um, thing is, though, uh, I had a cousin of mine stop by, and he has done tires for <laughs> years and like he said, most tire repair shops, they're not necessarily going to be wanting to inspect an old tire because they want to sell you a new tire. So I'm very tempted to take this thing here and break it down off the bead and just see if I can see anything inside there. Because with, with a front wheel assist like this, since we've got four front tires, uh, you do not want to put just one new tire. It's going to make the whole, whole front end pull wrong. And you don't want that. And um, so, well, we'll see what happens here, and I'll keep you updated. Now, these are original tires because right there is the date code 3807, and that is actually the, the actually the 38th week of 2007 is what that stands for. And um, but you can see, for being original tire. It still has decent tread, and so, but we'll see what we can do. Got the tire out here on the ground, outside the shed. I'm going to go ahead and break this thing down, because I want to see if there's anything inside it. Or if there's any, possibly anything poking, like a, broke cor a broken cord, or something like that. So what I did, in fact my cousin told me what to do. He said take and uh, mark out where the tire lines up with your valve stem hole and of course the valve stem of the, stem of the tube. So once I get the tube out, I'll line the valve stem up, up this area and pump it full of air, find out where the leak is, and then check that section of the tire where that hole's at. So I'm going to go, go get my bead breaker. Well, here's the bead breaker. Yeah, the backhoe. <laughs> Yeah, it works great. It's a whole lot easier than those slide hammer things trying to beat that thing off the bead. All you gotta do is just come right here at the corner of the bucket and come right here beside the edge of the rim and simply push down. I can tell you one thing, it's a whole lot easier than sitting there than trying to do all that by hand. So we'll get this one side broke down, flip it over to the other side and uh, get to work getting this tire popped off the rim.
Okay, that's got one side broke down. Okay, that's got the bead off. that's got it down off the bead now isn't that a whole lot easier than sitting there trying to hammer out with a bead breaker <laughs> of course i'll take the air gun and blow all that dirt out of there so that's no big deal but um okay i think i'm gonna get a pry bar and pop this one section right here a little bit but um, other than that though i think it's got it let me yeah there we go begin to get this tube worked out let me see if I can sit you right there well, I thought anyway Well guys, I think I found the problem. That ain't good. You see that right there at the base of the valve stem? No wonder it was leaking air. so far like I say there's the problem so just to be on the safe side I took some soapy water and just took my hands and just smeared over the tire no more air leaks anywhere that I could find no no, no bubbling and so somehow it got a crack in it right at the base of that valve stem now I just gotta get a new tube 
and then we'll get that put back into it and this project will be done thankfully that's the case that means that there's nothing wrong that's actually poking here inside the tire everything looks good from what i can see and so um we'll get a new tube lined up and get it put in here well it's the next day i just got back from the tire shop right here's my new tube so i got the tire over here on a pallet I'm going to work out here inside the shed now because i um, got a good strong southwest wind that's really kicked up and went to driving pretty hard. But um, we'll get that drop down in there and start getting, it, start getting it mounted back on. So right there's the valve stem hole in the rim. I'll get the forklift fired up and we'll get to work. Got the new tube laid out here. Got to put half of it in, then lower this half the tire down, and put the other half in. Just got to make sure you keep your valve stem lined up with the hole in the rim. Okay, that's getting it close. And what I did on both sides of the tire, I put a board. That way, um, well, you can't really see that one too well. That way, when I lower the, drop the forklift down, uh, the tire doesn't come down and pinch the tube between the tire and the rim and um, That way the boards hold the tire up. So let's take and go ahead and lower this down And it should sit on those tuba sixes Yeah, there we go. Okay. It's on those boards Okay, tube's not pinched Now I'm going to take and um, Lift up on this side and then I'll have it There's the valve stem, there's the valve stem hole in the rim. Now I just gotta keep getting this work down inside there. That way it seats in properly. Now there it is. Got the little brass ring put around the valve stem that holds it in, in place. I back the forklift up and so now I gotta get the tire walked back on the bead. One good thing with it having a tube in it, it'll pop up on the bead pretty easy. Being tubeless, uh, in order to remount it, you need a um, one of those, uh, I call it a pop tank, or like an air blaster that you take and pump up, and it blows a big, a big um, blast of air into it to, to help seat the bead. I've also seen guys take and use ether and throw a match at it, Although I'm not exactly all that much hepped up on having something blow up here inside the shed. <laughs> so, all right, let me see here. Got this doodad here. And that should have worked to get this thing put back on the bead. I'm going to start, start on this side opposite of the valve stem. Well, I thought anyway. <laughs> okay, you gotta get a pry bar. Okay, now I got that foot piece underneath there. I should be able to pry that out and begin to walk that down. It's got this. Come on. There we go. That cleat hook. And. 
Just take little bites at a time. That should begin to walk that around. I've never used this thing on a tractor tire before, so we'll see how it works. Keep walking this thing around. I actually wish I had two of these orange hook deals. But it's not like I'm doing tires all the time either, so. Okay, let's see if we can get up underneath here, right beside the valve stem. Not too sure how well you can see that. Yeah, there we go. Come on, hook in. That might be too big of a bite. We have to take them back. Getting closer, I think. There we go. Okay, well it took a little bit of hassle, but I finally got that popped down over there, so now we're on. I was trying to run, happened to take and keep playing with two uh, pry bars, so I didn't even grab the camera, but we're on now, so we're good to go. Now I'll put the valve stem core housing in. Take the cap off. All right. I'm going to pick it up or take it over the air compressor. Okay, let's see what happens here. Like I say, with this having a tube in it, it'll begin to mount up on the bead. Well, it's popped back up in the bead finally. So I'm going to take and pump it up to 20 PSI and it'll be ready to mount back on the tractor. Got it butted up again. 
against the hookup. Now I just gotta get the My half inch impact, I'm gonna use this to zip them all down. That's the thing I like about this big impact. On low and medium for clockwise, it'll give just so many hits and then stop. So I'm doing it all on medium. guys that's got this project done we're all tightened up down here and um, should be ready to go again so hey take care thanks a lot for watching we'll see you next time